right. So we'll, to finish actually the previous part, we said that we'll have this Caruana Anand, just, just, just to show just the pawn structure and bishops. And I actually think that we are even getting very similar opening. Very, very similar, very, very similar. Ta-da! Exactly similar. Okay. Let, let's just, uh, not looking at opening at all, just wanted to prove some positional idea. Uh-huh. Giving the pawn. And now, might be six, so taking this one. G5. Not bad one. I remember analyzing it and thinking, okay, well, uh, I was doing actually commentary on ICC that day, and we thought C5 or G5, and G5 we actually liked a bit less, because knight E4 is best move, and white may be better, but Anand went just very passive, and then just got into immediately worse endgame. It's okay, he, he, he lost this, this position, he's just suffering here. But the point was, whether it is c5 or g5, same idea. You just want to get more. Actually, g5 is playing on the dark swells with the pawn with the idea to attack. c5 might be more positional approach, but very, very similar to what we had before, only that in Tomaszewski, Kamsky, if white had done nothing, he could have gotten, after knight a5, just the demonstration, could have gotten the same bishop without even paying a pawn. OK. So what today? So we had all this big drama and Tomaszewski and Narkamura is out and Kamsky is out and then we have this dude, Vashir Lagrav, that Ben was, you know, uh, supporting him with his soul, with everything he has actually since round one, so he's a true believer. And Vashir, this Vashir yesterday defended, or, well, Kramnik didn't win, a completely winnable position. But maybe not, not a very, very easy one. Maybe we can have a quick one just to see the position they had yesterday. The interesting part is that while looking at the game, I remembered at least three games that Kramnik had similar stories, similar type of end games. It's, a, it's interesting when, you know, le le let's, let's go very quickly to the critical position that we want to go very qu quickly. So actually, I don't think that there is a function to just skip. And since the game was 125 moves, and I just want to jump into move 55, so this will be the fastest way. OK, bottom line, after a long game, Kramnik got the maximum he could, actually, which is a pawn up, all pawns on one side. Of course, if there are no knights, we immediately go home. It's just immediate draw. I mean, no, not, not much to, to see here. But there are two pair of folks. Well, what does two pair of folks right now give? Some possibilities even to go after the king tiny bit. Well, black king is weaker than white. Now, looking at this position, again, I'm going fast, fast, fast. Okay, they exchanged one pair of folks. Kramnik had amazingly similar endgame against, against Krasenkov in 2003. If I'm not mistaken, in Vekanze. 10 years, 10 and a bit years. Amazingly similar endgame, which I think there it was a bit, a bit more in White's favor. The pawns were immediately more advanced, and he actually ended up checkmating or winning the game. Then Kramnik had an endgame, again, if I'm not mistaken, two against one but with some weakness against Elyanov, 2008 or 9, which he also won. So very interesting. And we're very soon approaching the most interesting endgame out there. OK, I'm moving it just too fast because this is not our topic. OK, making some improvement. Yeah, this actually allowing this check was not, not really that OK. And now computers say black is still OK after knight d6. I think it was only move. So in some versions, it can block. 
But I heard Kramnik in the analysis is already saying, okay, you know, it's already, black has to be really careful and you should really calculate a lot. Already achievements for white if black has to be careful. Yeah, and the thing is that here, still okay, but now this is absolutely a horrible move. First of all, if king f2, that's important to touch this point. Take. And this is a draw because what they said. I mean, if something like this, then I think just exchanging, just exchanging the pawn is going to be a draw, right? Can we exchange the pawn here immediately? Yes, we can. Here I give check and just go here. Right, this will be okay, no problema. And if making some effort like this, then this is just, sorry, then just something like this. Even if the king gets to this square, well, l l let's say the king somehow get to this square. You just, you just put a knight, let, let me show the position. This is just a fortress. And whenever it goes here, here, the only way to attack it is for the king to make all this journey. But some pa some, somewhere on the road, there will be a g6 exchanging the pawn. So, OK, it seems all complicated for us, but kind of if you just know the end game, not that complicated. But here, Vashir played this horrible move, rook f1. What's the problem? That now is, well, one problem is just losing here. Because after knight d6, look where he put his rook. The worst part, the king f7, and it will be captured. I mean, the rook was other square. Yes, maybe unpleasant, but still most likely in a drawish territory. Put the rook on f1, just horrible thing. g6, and here Kamnik said he was thinking about taking and playing rook b7, which looks kind of winning. Here, this, no, okay, they, they, they pointed out some, some lines, but to me it just looks like kinda, kinda just winning. I mean, actually, I'm not certain why he didn't play that way. I mean, this rook, rook here is a really, really strong. Oh, and also this line important, here, here, and if this move, knight f4, and after take, there is this way. That's, that's just an important. Let's see the entire line that Kramnik mentioned. This, this, and now this move. Very important. And the pawn cannot be captured because of king f4, and white ends up winning after all this big, beautiful drama. A big line, but winning. But OK, actually, this is not what I even wanted to go to. I wanted to show you this position. Does someone remember? Similar endgame to that in Kramnik history. When I've seen the, when I've seen this game, I remember the three endgames against Kasenkov, against Elianov. Nobody mentioned it, and another quite famous endgame by Kramnik, with even more famous opponent. You remember Jacob? Only because it was Kramnik mentioned it in the interview. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh, Kramnik mentioned it. I haven't seen it. He mentioned that yeah. that he's like. Oh my gosh, how could I do it again, like the endgame with Kasparov, I cannot believe it. Okay, something. Yeah, Kamik, I think, I think in game four in their match, I'm not certain if game four or six, I think, I don't really know, maybe game six. In the match, he had a pawn on A pawn. And the knight was defending it from the back, but kind of very annoying because the rook is defending the knight the rook defending the knight, the knight defending the pawn, and there is no way to untangle it, which apparently he had to wait 13 years to get exactly the same situation. <laughs> it's not so simple, you know, both players were, were saying, okay, they thought it's winning, but then Vashir said, okay, he completely blacked out, and then when he was looking at his position, suddenly he couldn't find any win here. That's, that's, that's quite amazing. There's, and Short was also saying, like, okay, well, how to win here? Because well, what, does, what does Black want to do here? If it's Black turn here, I play this beautiful move. Black is going to play this move. And then the knight is going to be is under attack. Knight goes, take, draw. That's, that's, that's the problem. 
the knight is on the other side, on f8, not on f4. I mean, there's nothing to look with the rook and knight, but not where the knight is on that side of the board. So there was only one way to win here. And I showed in the official uh, uh, analysis room, also said, oh my gosh, what to play here? He couldn't know. Not easy. And then you have two of the world's best players, not that easy. There's only one way, and it is this way. Again, rook and the knight is quite easy draw. How to defend the pawn? And now one tiny move. Yeah. Because knight f6, we just take it, right? But king e4 does the, this thing. Kicks the rook from its optimal square. Optimal square doing what? Covering knight f6 check. Or knight f6 to protect the rook. And it was amazing that even after the game, even in the analysis, the players still didn't see that. I mean, this move king e4 was really hard on them. I mean, okay, they play for, they're playing for two and a half weeks. They are, it was five and a half hours game and pff, all the nerves and stress. Of course, they are best players in the world. But just sometimes interesting, nice to see that they're still human. Because he didn't see that. So what happened? He played this move, but now check. Check, 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 check. OK. How to defend the pawn? And here you get that position. The rook cannot move anywhere defending the knight. The knight cannot move anywhere defending the pawn. Just let's prevent the king from participating somehow in the game. That's it. The king forever is going to be cut on the fourth rank. The rook defending the knight. That's it. Absolutely, that's it. Well, they just played for another 50 and a bit moves, but... Mo oh, yeah, just tiny funny, right? Stalemate. Yeah, and this is just a draw. So this is the introduction. So we have a sheer that somehow, you know, not easy to kill him. You know, was playing, surviving here, and playing today against Kramnik the first rapid. And you know, it's interesting. We'll take black side. It's interesting because, you know, there is a time to play bad games. Time to play your worst game of the year. It shouldn't be in the semi-final, the rapid of the World Cup. That's exactly what happened to Vashir. I mean, he played he had a great year. I mean, he raised his rating. I think he started around 2,700, maybe tiny above. He is now 2,740 and a bit. Made it constantly improving, playing at highest level, winning blitz, and this is really a killer. Ah, but this game, that was a wrong moment to play your worst game of the year. So he's right. Playing against the Scotch. And of course, this is Kramnik's main move, main, main, main move. He had many games. Bishop c5 is just another very main move in general. And bishop b4 was played. It's a kind of interesting idea. I haven't seen this idea up until a few years ago. But it's an interesting idea. If knight f6, then Sorry, knight c3, the knight f6, we go to this variation, which is just a normal one for black. And considered absolutely OK. The normal way is that after knight f6, white captures, capture, e5, taking the knight, black is spinning the pawn. And this is very complicated line. There were actually some games even in the tournament by Caruana, player number four, five in the world by rating, or top 10. But what, what's the purpose of this bishop before? I mean, wha what's the idea behind it? You don't want a knight to come to his best square. That is correct. Basically wasting this tempi, but the knight is deprived of c3 square. And here, yeah, Jacob said uh, I was doing, he heard me today a tiny bit doing commentary on ICC in the morning. I didn't like this move so much. It's probably not a bad one, but Queen G4 was played by Kasparov and is one decent move to look. Probably the main move. And there were actually quite a lot of games in the World Rapid Championship 
in June 2013, and the Blitz one, involving knight f5. This is how they all play. OK, something like this, because actually black has d5, some sacrifice in the center, very powerful idea. White plays c c4. There were some games of Aronian, I think, Sargisian. Some, some, some really decent players were playing it. Mm -hmm. My feeling, I think white is a bit better. I mean, if you take this bishop and put it on g7, OK, we'll take black 1,000 times and a bit more, you know, if just black can get all those dark squares that are so ridiculously weak, right? All the dark squares, incredible. But black has the other color bishop. I think white is a bit better here. And, and I'm not certain exactly how better to play. I was actually looking at this line today quite a bit. So really interesting. You know, Vashir, by the way, has been playing more d4 lately. <sighs> Maybe he wanted to play e4 and uh, d f and the scotch, surprising Kramnik. Probably surprised himself a bit more. <laughs> no, and th that's kind of pity because he was really like, he beat Caruana. He, he had some, some decent games. So by any standards, how can black be suffering here? Here, here, and just d6 next, if take, take. That's not take, that's a bit better. Yeah, how can black be suffering here? He's not. But maybe he should have gone already this way, because very soon he's starting to get a worse position here. I mean, actually not yet. To be honest, this is all reasonable, but it's clear Black is not suffering. And queen h4, OK. Already we can see some action around this side of the board. Rook e1 is logical. Actually, another logical move, I think, was knight e4. Just bringing some pieces to this side. <sighs> yeah, and here, very soon, the game went out of control for Vashir. I mean, we said before, when we were discussing the rapid game by Andrekin, Vashir is, is same, same style. Very, very strong player. Actually been playing really decent chess. You know, we see his rating. This was his latest rating before the tournament. He, he, go, he gained like 20, 25 more points. He's, he's, an, you know, he's number 15, I don't know, 20, there are 15, 20 in the world, but just constantly improving. And he's very young, like 22, 3, I don't know, 20 and a bit. But in Rapid and Blitz, I if there was a Blitz, I, I think he might be even favorite on, on Kremnik. Oh, my fellow commentator from the day, Ben. Draw? Draw? No, not Ben. No. I was doing today analysis with Grandmaster Feingold that is texting while we are uh, doing well, something important. OK, nothing important. OK, I by texting this position to Vashir, prepare better next time you play the semi-final of the World Cup. I, I talked to him today, and he said they're not playing. He doesn't play for third. They don't play anymore. He, he doesn't play what? They're not playing a third place game. They're not playing a third place? No. All that he said. Seriously? Yeah. You really spoke to him? Yeah. So cool. So, but, but it's amazing, because it's written that there are, they have a tie break for third and fourth spot now. He told me he's not playing anymore. Maybe he doesn't want to play. All right. So yeah, because actually it's not important. Last time, the third one got an invitation to candidates, not this one. Yeah, and here, this rookie four was a very questionable moment, right? I mean, both me and Ben didn't like this. Now, 94 seems right, just reasonable. Like, bringing some pieces around there just seems very healthy. And we looked at this line. OK, maybe h3 possible, but. Just this was a cool line. And now we have the c5 that's just just enough, right? Just enough to actually is it enough? Okay. If queen take, then take. Kinda crazy, right Ben? <laughs> but what if knight take and then this move? Okay, we have to Juggle everything. Take, 
knight d3 and defending the rook, attacking the queen, mighty knight, and the bishop will come back. How many blunders have I made in two minutes, Ben? Many or not so? In no, 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 but it's right to play. You want to play rook e4? No, after. Oh, after knight d3. Yeah, yeah, knight d3. Yeah. No, because if not, not simple. I mean, this is no joke, right? I mean, this is no joke. But okay, take a knight d3. Yeah, knight e4 was the important move. But is this position already really bad? I'm not certain. I mean, okay, what is the threat here for? For black, first of all. What's the threat here? Simple threat, no? Bishop f5. A actually, yeah, bishop f5 immediately would work, but maybe take on d3 and then bishop f5. Because, for example, okay, let's say white play. This actually, you will be better, but not winning. I think I can go here, 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 here. You have a pair of bishops, you are better, but I have this rook, rook takes e5 that saved, saved white. Because if you take on e5, it's going to take on f5. But you are right with the idea. Just knight, knight take d3, and bishop f5 seems kind of winning. Bishop e2. But that's a problem. I mean, he just collapsed here immediately. And again, the time is no joke. When super fast players starting to think, yeah, queen g6. Yeah, and here, quite, quite absurd. I mean, OK. You know, again, me and Ben, we were looking to then. I think I just mentioned, oh, rook h4 just losing to bishop c2 and the bishop on f3. It's like just blitz idea. And Vashir that, I think he won the European Blitz Championship with like 19 out of 22. Some ridiculous, they played a double round, 11, a double game, 11 rounds, like ridiculous score. I mean, for him to blunder this thing is, I mean, rook f4, the position is bad, but okay, maybe it's going to live tiny bit, tiny bit longer. But yeah, because 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 this is the idea. If we play here, and now thinking about winning the exchange, not just a lot, a lot of captures, but okay, white get a big pawn here, and then some outpost. Oh, white is okay here, or at least surviving. Lots of captures. No, white is, white is miserable, you know. I mean, of course, he's playing to defend, not to lose. But that's incredible, just how he blundered here. Rook h4. Ha. Huh. Bishop c2. So what is his idea with queen take c2? I mean, this is not working for a thousand different reasons. But <laughs> that, that it just that, like nothing would work, right? Yeah, I mean, Kramnik played knight takes f3, and the game was just immediately, immediately over. Check, and then take the queen. But, but what was his idea? His idea was that if take, he wants to play this move. <laughs> Attacking the queen and then ha having a perpetual. Kind of cool idea. The amazing thing is that nothing, nothing is working. Because queen take, take here, go whatever, you know. Let's go to e4. and. Only a rook down for, <laughs> only a rook down. So basically, you know, no, like I said, coming with your worst game of the year to the semi-final, you know, the rapid in the semi-final, not very cool, not very cool. So to beat Kramnik with, uh, to beat Kramnik with black pieces, not that easy. I, I said today on air, that's actually amazing. In rapid games, in rapid games, Kasparov beat him several, I, I think Kasparov beat him several times in rapid Kramnik. But how many normal time control games he beat him with black? How many games Kasparov, right? Not a bad player. How many games in normal time control he beat Kramnik when Kramnik was white and Kasparov black? Zero. It's easy, zero. Yeah, Kramnik didn't lose one game with white to Kasparov. And they played for 
since 92, 93 first time until 2004, 5. They played ma probably many tens of games, all the Linares and Vacancy and this and their match. In the match, he didn't lose also with Black, so <laughs> not really that bad. But yeah, amazing. He didn't actually Anand. Anand has done it several times. That's why in 2008, the match that Anand won, games three and five, he just beat him in the Maran, and that was a huge shock. Think about it. You never lose one game in your career to Kasparov with white pieces, and you lose two games in a row with white in a match. That match was over after this. So bottom line, he's most likely not going to lose to Vashir in the Rapid. Indeed, it was a draw, and Kramnik qualified. The other one was maybe a bit more tight, more interesting, because it involved each one of those players is going to be it's going to be like a huge surprise in the candidate. Like, they are not the caliber of the world top 10, at least not yet. I mean, uh, Andreki is actually really young. He might get there. Tomaszewski, I kind of doubt it. I mean, I think this was the best, best tournament of his life, best result. Well, be it. I mean, I think he won European Championship once, like 2009, 10, something like that, maybe, right? Around it. Uh, obviously, very, very strong player, but you know, very strong player is not enough to be top 10 in the world. But Andrekin, we'll see. So he's, he's on his way to the candidates. And actually, playing not like the game against Swidler, where he played, I just want to move the pieces, he's playing here main line of the Slav with the white pieces. A6, C5, and this is actually a line I. At some point, I kind of liked it for right now, I think. No, not one of the most interesting ones. And you know, this was really interesting because just amazing. I, I, I'm not certain how to explain it. We mentioned Andrekin as one of the world's fastest players, by far, fastest and good player, right? Not just fast. Mm. What is this thinking for six minutes here? This is not mistake. He thought for six minutes. And then another one minute, and another two minutes. There are some ideas with knight h4. You know, Timor, my friend Timor Garev, which is very, very strong grandmaster, almost 2700. And we were, he was a student of mine in the university I was teaching, and we're still friends and do chess. He played a great game in one of the college events against grandmaster Leonid Kritz, very strong grandmaster. And it was very similar line with knight h4, bishop e6. It involved the pawn sacrifice, and he won very classically. When I come to think about what Andrekin was thinking, no, this is insane. He's nine minutes down, move 10, and nothing happened. He could, he could have played the last three moves in three seconds. Queen b3, a3, bishop e2, and nothing, and nobody would blink. He took nine minutes. My feeling is he was constantly looking at knight h4 idea. That's why I mentioned this. But really amazing because pff, don't know. Don't know what to say. But here we are. Knight e4. What's the idea of knight e4 if you are black? What is that beautiful idea? I don't, to play f5, hmm. e5 at some point, but I would just say this, Let, let's ask a question. Who has more space, white or black here? White? So does it make sense for black to exchange pieces? That's it. So you know, that's it. You have less space. You want to exchange pieces. But what, what does space mean? You have x amount of pieces for y amount of squares. If you have half x, well, now you have much more spaces per relative, right? You, you have 20 squares, and you have five pieces. OK, each piece gets four squares. You have four pieces, each piece gets five squares. So if you have less space, the logic says, OK, I want to exchange pieces. It will help me get rid of the problem. So 94, rook c1, rook e8, e5, idea, take, take. I guess if this move, this is something to consider. 
just an idea. I mean, may, maybe we can be fancy. No, I'm just thinking. Here, here, take. And if take, maybe I can first take here. Just, I think, kind of good idea. Okay, similar direction. Take, 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 take. Okay, very, very, look very equalish. Here, actually, I thought was a very good moment in the game. The almost automatic move to think about here will be, if you're black, which move almost automatic to think? Well, at least I thought almost automatic. H5. Kind of putting all the pawns on light squares, super solid. This would be correct and guarantee a draw if the queen side would have been locked. But the queen sign is not locked. White's plan is very simple. White will play queen. White will attack c6 with everything he has, very slowly. Maybe it's not enough, maybe it is. There is one player that is playing here, one, one, white, that can play on this side. Hypothetically, you know, let, let, let's just play this move. Of course, it's a horrible move because of unpassign. C6 is ridiculously weak. But let's hypothetically put this position. Oh, this is where you shake hands and go home. Everyone's happy or maybe not. But no, no breaks in the position. Everyone's super solid and so on. But it wasn't exactly the position. And that's why I remember, you know, I thought that H5, which looks so automatic, is actually wrong. This is excellent play by Black. Excellent, because he managed to undermine, weaken white dark squares, the pawns. He creates some targets. And here we thought Black is totally, totally OK. I mean, d4 is weak. I mean, Black got his. Think about the position we just shown a minute ago as opposed to this one. Well, before white had the free roll, b4, b5. Now he's constantly looking at this point. Queen g6, good move. I mean, black, black is the one that can be better here. This is where white weakness is, and where black base, pawn base. This one, oh yeah, go attack this one. That's no, not that easy. OK, other king just defended. Oh, he doesn't want to fix the pawn structure. A5, I'm not certain exactly why I need to play A5, but yeah, and here, here is where Anderkin, sorry, Tomaszewski started to get in big trouble. I mean, he could have just exchanged. Actually, we were even thinking about this move. Well, what would you play with white after this move? Takes and queen h3, I will take your king on g2. I'll take with the pawn. No, I will take on g4, and then after queen h3, I will take the king. <laughs> no, that's what I want to take. By the way, but this is something important, because I've seen it especially with younger players. But really, you know, someone captures something, you're immediately thinking about we actually spoke about this in one of your games last week. What's that? My goodness. Someone captures something on some square. You, everyone immediately say, I have to capture on that square. No, there are 63 other squares on the board. So if something captures on E4, you put this position to 100 kids. Take 100 kids rating 1,000. Most of them, you 90%, immediately will have to capture this. Because why? That's where something was captured. That's what just happened to you. <laughs> so, no, it's important to understand because you are ridiculously strong to see this thing, right? So it's important to understand why it happened. It happened because there was the last capture on a square, and your brain immediately was saying, I have to capture on this square. So what to play? Now after, we know we should not capture on e4.
Yes. You need to defend d4, no? Only move I can see. I'm pretty certain only move Andre King could also see. So, yeah, queen c3, but not easy how to continue. And the rook on h5 is super annoying because it's preventing f5. Exchange queens and just go rook e1 and, like, I don't know, I don't see any big, huge problems, or you could have exchanged queens before. But here Tomaszewski played this rook e1 and got in trouble here. Take. First of all, can he take the queen? Not really, right? Because check and check. And just taking everything. That's finished. And now Ben spoke a tiny bit about retreats. White has one excellent move. Black is going to suffer some material losses here. Well, a pawn. If I remember, OK, computer was saying queen b1 and was saying somewhat unclear. Well, white is better, of course, but half a point or something. Not, not that dramatic. But this is the move that Tomaszewski didn't see. 100%. 100%. And Tomaszewski, that few minutes ago, let's see, has eight minutes time advantage. That's a lot. I mean, it's 100%, right? He has twice his opponent time, pretty much. It's, it's going and shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. And this is where you can see he's in trouble. Two minutes extra on the clock, down on the clock, big time. And playing this fast, still they are playing fast. So it's seen this continuation. But just a really bad position here. Queen d7. The problem is that his king is weak. And white's plan is just to go g5, bishop, h5. Really no, 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 not that easy to defend this one. Not that easy to defend this one. Queen c2. I think he played qu Well, could he have taken here? Maybe, maybe no, because just this move. Just this move and this, like really not easy to see how to protect anything. Yeah, just just really very straightforward idea. Okay, uh, probably probably about losing here. Okay, just to see that you are not sleeping, and we will finish this one. What after Queen e6? What is White going to play? Because if if this is working, then Black is happy. Bishop take f7, and the queen is not protected. So he played king g7. What is what this idea after bishop take? He takes f3. Beautiful. So now we finished super basic kids tactics. <laughs> we can continue. <laughs> take. So what is his threat now? <laughs> Actually, I was serious. <laughs> what is his threat now? He wanted to win the game pretty much on the spot. Queen h6, yeah. And after this one, once again, we're going to play? Rook f7. OK, excellent. So we see all the cheap tactics. <laughs> Queen h7 is losing. There was some way somehow to survive. I don't even, maybe king g8 was the move. I don't even remember. But take, attacking everything. Oh, oh that, that, that's just the, the broadcast compared to the official time. No, he, he, here. And resign. Rook h8 is being threatened. And of course, this resulting with rook g3. So Andrekin really was not at any point worse in the game. I mean, at some point, it looked like he has nothing. Or maybe kind of, yeah, maybe at some point, it looked like optically, black was a bit, a bit more comfortable. But black should have taken a draw. I'm not certain why Tomaszewski did. Maybe, again, the less time control, the faster the game. Andrekin is, is a favorite. And maybe Tomaszewski thought that he can do something here. But, well, once again, this is our Andrekin style. 
is not risking that much. He plays really solid. No, but, um, but very, very good for matches. It's incredible. And you know, and when, when the some possibility is open, he's just there and not giving many, many chances. So, you know, we have Kramnik that, you know, you can say whatever you want, but it's probably very difficult to be one of the favorites. And actually, from some round, for the last few rounds, he is the favorite, pretty much. OK, maybe Kawana, but I still think people were thinking Kramnik is the favorite. And just making it all the way. Aronian was knocked out long ago. Uh, um, Karyakin was really, actually, Andrekin beat Karyakin. Same style, right? Two draws, and he beat him in the rapid. In player number five, six in the world. Karyakin is out. Grishuk is out. Um, many, many out. Nakamura is out. Kramnik is there, made it to the final. You know, it's, I, I think, well, good for him. Playing against Andrekin, that's really a big surprise. You well, know, I, I guess Kramnik will, is a big favorite, especially since there are four games. I mean, if you will put eight games or 12 games, I think, I think everyone will say Kramnik is a huge favorite. The more games, uh, nobody has a doubt he's a better player. Four games is not two, and I think Kramnik is the big favorite, but for Andrekin, definitely the most impressive <laughs> tournament of his life. And we rest day tomorrow and Friday, starting to play again. <laughs>